All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I um, host the Friday Transportation Seminar here today uh, with my colleague, Dr. Figliosi of Civil Engineering. And today I am very excited to introduce our guest, Dr. Uh, Nakamura from um, Yokohama National University, who will be talking to us about um, experiences from Asia and Latin America. So now I'm going to turn the floor over to Dr. Nakamura. Thank you, Jenny, and good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in reality, in Japan, that's 5 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, but <laughs> still it's a, uh, Friday afternoon. So uh, it's my very big pleasure uh, to be invited here. Uh, I'm now the position of the Vice President of Yokohama National University for International Affairs, and uh, one of the, my jobs as a Vice President is uh, to open the uh, international branch of our university. And the Portland State University kindly accepted our request. And last August, uh, PSU opened the, the branch office of Yokohama National University. And uh, based on this branch, we start the collaboration and research or student exchange. And uh, today, um, I was he am here with uh, my colleague, two professors, and two master course graduate school students. It's a fast uh, kickoff event for our stream starting from the uh, branch office of the Yokohama National University here. By the way, anyway, so today the topic is uh, urban planning and urban public transportation. So you are starting the lecture. Down is next. Down is next. <laughs> <laughs> so you get it. Uh, okay. No, Magic. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. So we are starting the lecture. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Masaya Fumihiko Nakamura. I was in 1962. I was born in Japan and I graduated from uh, uh, no, University of Tokyo in 1985. And I got a doctor degree in 1991. And then I got a position as a research associate in University of Tokyo. But the first big event for uh, me is uh, uh, working at the uh, Thailand, uh, the assistant professor uh, uh, working into the Asian Institute of Technology. It's an international graduate school gathering the students from all over the world, many Asia, more than 20 countries, and also professors coming from the, all over the world, including uh, European countries and also the United States, the Canada, of course, in Japan. And I was staying there two years. After that, I got a position in Yokohama National University, and I got a full professor position in 2004. And my second event is also very uh, unique, uh, uh, impressive to me, myself, is uh, I got a position of visiting professor in uh, Palana Catholic University, or even I try to speak in Portuguese, Pontificia Universidade de Católica de Palana, and located in Curitiba in Brazil. I was then two months there. After that, uh, did some political mechanism at the university. I was working as a dean, and now I'm working as vice president. My contract will finish next year, I hope. And <laughs> because um, uh, now I'm the vice president and I'm very busy in the managing the university affairs. Uh, the Yokohama National University is a medium-sized national university in Japan. Uh, and the 10,000 students are studying there. Uh, even though one with some student has some, something, then uh, all the executive directors should come together and have a meeting and judge and how to uh, provide the information or how to talk with their parents. Everything is, should be done, uh, the team, and I'm the one with the team, so 
my skirt is changing suddenly again and again. And so uh, I hope I'll finish this position soon. And my major is urban transport planning and policies, urban planning, public transport planning. And today's content lecture is like this. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, let me review very, sim very simply about the transportation and the trend with the transport researches and picking up some technical keywords. And then we set the strategic framework. Then I raise a uh, technical term TOD. And then we move to the case, case reviews. We, want, we pick up the two cities from the Asian country, one in Tokyo and the other in Bangkok. And the, uh, in the sixth six part, learning from Latin American cases, I pick up one case today, the creature. And then finally, we have some discussion perspectives. And so when we talk about the traffic, first you have to raise several negative points. One, the uh, traffic jam, and which sometimes causes uh, environmental problem, including uh, air pollution. It's a photo of the Bangkok. And the second one, traffic accident. I don't want to have the real photo, therefore I didn't use that. But uh, as you know, the traffic accident is a very serious. And uh, social exclusion is also a very important keyword. It's uh, just uh, 70, 70 kilometers from the Tokyo area. Uh, it uh, looks like a mountain area, but they're the residents, but they lose the mobility because their public transportation stopped. In Japan, basically, public transportation operated by the private operators, and of course, there's a subsidy system from the municipality. But uh, under some condition, uh, they have to stop the services. Then, the people lose their uh, option to go to the town center. So they have to go by the cars or they have to ask any friends or they have to call taxi. But also taxi, the taxi driver is another problem in rural area in Japan. There are almost no taxi in many cities. So therefore, we have to consider the environmental issues, accident issues, social exclusion. So we have to solve those problems somehow. And then, about the trend of the transport and research, I learned from the, my professor even now, uh, and I picked up several slides from him. Uh, one is, uh, if we review the transport and research for 15 and 60 years, uh, firstly, the target is uh, vehicles. But in the 1960s, I remember, in case the United States in the 1960s, in Japan 1970s, uh, the research target shifted a little bit uh, to the humor, the movement of the people. And then, especially recently, the goal of the target or criteria or, uh, would be the quality of the human life. And then, about the motorization also, it's a changing. When I was a student in the 1980s, uh, we are believing the number of the vehicles registered are increasing. Uh, some of the say forever, it's increasing. But it's at the um, maximum point. So it's a kind of a stable situation. Some professor mentioned this point, the peak car period. And also at the same time, uh, so today, uh, I, it's for me it's my first time to use a direct flight from the Tokyo to Portland. Um, and, uh, but I've been here several times. And today I found at the exit of the airport terminal, I got a small board, it says, taxi, but the next line, it said Uber. So it's a very surprising to me. Firstly, Uber is now prohibited in Japan. Uh, in Japan, our transport regulation, all the driver, if you get the money to the passengers, they have to have the special license and special training, and their vehicle is also specially registered. Therefore, according to this rule, the, it's very difficult to apply Uber. That's a, that's a problem. But so the ride sharing or the car sharing or bike sharing uh, becomes gradually popular and popular, I heard, in the States or the European countries. In Japan, a little slow. However, uh, it's a trend. So no, basically, we were thinking, once we got the money, we buy the car and we use the car, but now we have another option to share the car, to share the vehicle, to share the time, to share the mobility. So it's another trend. And also, when we review the methodological points, uh, the first stage, especially if we review the, any report or the journal paper in the 1960s, 70s, uh, normally uh, the main topic of the transport research is the demand prediction. 
uh, firstly, the aggregate four-step models, then it becomes a disaggregate, discrete choice model. But anyway, the target the first we predict the future situation and then provide the service, provide the system. Then it moves to the second stage. Still we are predicting, but uh, using this result, we consider how to protect. But these days, the activity of the uh, policy application planning uh, the, to discuss and to make and to decide the decision in the first stage. And of course, some prediction calculation procedure related to this process. But after that, uh, second, secondly, important to run the two act together. So therefore, the wording is not changing. So, and also the perspective is expanding uh, from the economic point of efficiency becomes, of course, the key one, uh, the key word, and also reliability and safety, environment, social welfare, landscape, what town center revitalization. Those are related to transportation researches. I remember in the former days, it, se it was separate, but now it's connected. And also target mode of the transportation. Uh, as I said, basically vehicular traffic is a main, but working the bicycle, well, maybe the power transit meaning the American term and uh, Asian term are a little bit different. Uh, I guess here the power transit is mainly for the uh, disabled people or people who have need some special help. But um, technically speaking, power transit definition is an intermediate mode between the bus system and the taxi system, which can be observed in many Asian cities and African cities. But anyway, the power transit could be the one of the target model of the researches, and of course, bus there. So, if I summarize, uh, more interest on the human-based issues, and uh, it becomes more and more interdisciplinary. And the decision-making support is one of the conditions. And when we set the goals, uh, one is the sustainability. Uh, Sustainability-oriented research is uh, increasing. And about the transfer model, it becomes a motor and inter um, model issues are also discussed. And implication with other areas such as urban planning and so on. Then, uh, some technical keyword. Uh, I pick up two first. The one is a street for the place making. Uh, basically, the street is a mainly for the vehicular traffic, and the sidewalk is a side sidewalk. Uh, it's a, not a main sidewalk. And uh, just we count the number of pedestrians. We never th thought about the activities there. Well, we never thought about the relation between the uh, transport and activity outside the road. But in real life of the hours, it's connected. We are staying in the houses or the flat, apartment, the hotel, and it's uh, outside the street. But once we go out, it's a street. But our activities are continuous. But uh, in the research, this part is a civil engineer part, and this part is the architect part. Uh, and in the university, Department of Architecture, Department of Civil Engineering is a very far, uh, physically far, and mentally far. So, and also, there are not so many researchers collaborating on both sides. But the street is a part of the activity uh, place in the city. So we can discuss more and more about uh, street issues from a different perspective. My colleague uh, Shino Miura will make a presentation after about that. And the other one is a so-called autonomous vehicle. Um, in Japanese, uh, vehicle is a jidosha. Jido means uh, auto. Therefore, so in the, when we speak English, it's very simple, but when we speak this topic in Japanese, we are very confused. Uh, auto, auto, car, or something like that. But uh, anyway, autonomous vehicle is now uh, becomes uh, gradually popular and popular. Of course, technically or uh, socially, a lot of discussion should be solved. And uh, if I pick up the trend of the urban transport revolution, uh, I prefer these seven words. The first one, the smart. Smart means uh, ICT aided and also actually that is smart and it's also the environment threat. The second keyword is a shared, as I said. And uh, still the environmental issue, sustainable environmental sustainability issue is a 
very important in that sense, green is another word. And when we see the planning in a micro level, uh, walkability is another important keyword. And bicycle uh, is very popular here, I know, and also in Japan. Uh, in terms of the statistics, share of the bicycle usage is very high. Um, however, our infrastructure is very poor in Japan. Therefore, I have to say, especially concerning the Japanese cases, uh, security or the safety for the bicycle is very important. And the public transportation, um, the first point is the reliability. It should be punctual, uh, it should be comfortable, it should be safe. And if we design the city with the public transportation, then we have to uh, prepare the station that stops. It's a kind of a node uh, in the using the terming of the terms of the networking analysis is a node. And what's the role of a node? So first we, we go by the train here, we change another train. What well, we change the we came by the bus and we change uh, the uh, another bus. So it's an interchange. So what's the function of interchange? Of course, smoothness is very important. However, um, sometimes uh, it's a, another important point of the activity and all the travelers have the, an, another option to stay here longer. So in that sense, enjoyable becomes another keyword. Um, once again, in the Japanese cases, the mothers with the babies uh, who had a job, uh, sometimes they have to take uh, the babies uh, on the train, and so the station is a very important point if something is happening. So the station facility uh, sh should provide the, the service for those uh, mothers or the ladies, or sometimes the fathers also take the babies. But anyway, so the node, in the former days, node should be simple, node should be smaller. No, there should be uh, providing a smoothness, a shorter distance of the transfer and shorter time of the interchange. But at the same time, we provide a nursery or other waiting space or some special space or the shops. So it's changing now. And then, based on the discussion, I try to uh, give some assumption of the framework. Uh, I could say the goal of for the sustainable mobility uh, it's a little bit risky to speak here in the United States, but I have to say, uh, less dependence on car traffic is a one of the target. Uh, I know the Portland is a, a very a unique city comparing with uh, other uh, metropolitan in the United States. Um, but even though, uh, based on the discussion uh, before, I have to say it's one of the keywords. And then, how to control the target, the three part, the owners, we have to control ownership, we have to control usage, or we have to control parkings. And in the context of urban transportation, maybe the three directions. And in my understanding, ownership, uh, in the former days, ownership is outside the target. Uh, you can buy the car, you can buy many cars, but the point is how to use the car. In that sense, the second point is more important. However, as I said, the trend is from the ownership to sharing. In, in this context, this can be the target in the near future. And the parking is very important. When we design the city center or uh, total movement of the uh, urban daily tra travels, the, most of the car has to park. So in that sense, parking management is very important. My colleague Shinji Tanaka, uh, he will give a presentation about the parking this afternoon. And then, uh, when we discuss the strategies, uh, of course, we dis should discuss supply side, and demand side, and also the long term and the short term. And then, uh, skipping this one, uh, I give another slide. I said that smart and uh, the two mean mainly two meaning the environmental friendly or the uh, information communication technology aided. And when we discuss the city. And uh, two interesting keywords to me is the sustainability and the creativity. And as you know, sustainability consists of environment issues, economic issues, social issues. And uh, from, especially from the environment point of view, less car dependency is the one of the target. And uh, when we consider the economic efficiency, especially to solve the traffic germs and also social inclusion goals that should be considered, then we can replace this world to the less car usage. Uh, or the wise use of the car 
we don't deny all the cars. The cars are very useful and very uh, attractive, and in several contexts, very important. But uh, in some situation, we don't need a car to use. So therefore, I state the why is a car. So to achieve this, uh, we have to ask the resident the people to change their travel behavior. So-called the travel demand management is the one, and also to the topic TOD, the other one I tell later. And so, the, to achieve this one, to achieve this one, the, the transport mode should include uh, not only the vehicle traffic but also working and bicycle and public transport. Therefore, it should be choiceable. Then, in that sense, multimodal. And as I said, that it should be connected. Then it can be the intermodal. Then to achieve this kind of system, we can reach the uh, high level of quality with a ST uh, line. It's uh, the structure. And then may I have the time to say about this on TDM. A TDM definition is that we uh, to ask the travelers or the drivers to change the behavior in order to reduce uh, uh, traffic congestion in some specific point in a specific timing. So just basically five ideas. The one is the uh, route change. If we can change the route, uh, we can contribute to reduction of traffic jams. So for example, the navigation system can be uh, working for this. And the second one is the uh, model change. The model change, the, there are several ideas, bicycle working, but today I pick up the park and ride. Of course, there are a lot of the options. The third one is the destination change. Uh, in sometimes, uh, in, in, not in my laboratory, but in, in my regular classes, uh, some student intentionally missed the class and they changed their destination uh, to Disneyland. Uh, but, uh, uh, seriously speaking, if we provide a satellite office, we can change the destination. And frequency change, also it's happening in case of students. I'm asking the five day a week, but some in the three day a week. Uh, they say uh, it's uh, the compressed working. Uh, if we, he is working so seriously, it's okay, but no, normally not. And finally, time change. Yes, some students are late for the school. Yes. But it, they say they can contribute to solve the traffic, no, uh, congestion of trains. But uh, how can trigger the community in the one way? Like? And it looks very easy to understand, but uh, it's very complicated. Today, since the time is limited, I pick one example of the park and the ride. Normally, when it's a park and ride project, uh, suppose it's a home and commuting to the office, and now the people are using private cars, and we are asking them to shift to the park and the ride, it means uh, picking up some stations and uh, we set the parking. So you can use a car from the house and you park your car in the station, then you can, you can take the uh, public transportation to your uh, destination. So this change, we can say the modal shift, and it's recommended. However, based on the research by our laboratory, some cases in the Japanese trial of the park and the ride, uh, it's not. I asked the interview to the park and the ride users, well, are you satisfied with the park and the ride? They say yes. And my second question is, uh, before the project, what were your mode? And they say, I was using buses, but I quit the bus because park and ride is very attractive. I started to use a car. So it's also a modal shift. But um, the bus operator lose the revenue. And this is a short part, but uh, the car usage is increasing. So from the uh, policy point of view in the environment sustainability, I have to say it's not recommended. So the other one is uh, this one. Uh, so in this case, the station was there, the railway is there. And for more dates, the, the, this, guy was using, this guy was using the bus to the station. But since we start a new project, the park on the right, they quit the buses. The bus is dirty, bus is slow, the bus is very expensive. So I don't like the buses, so I, I prefer to use in a car. So I use the car to the station. And so he said, I'm contributing to the park under the project. Yes, you are. But you uh, spoil the bus and you start to use the car more. Uh, so in that sense, 
you are contributing to the park and ride project, you are not contributing to the uh, full framework of the transportation uh, strategy. So, but this kind of change is happening. So then I have to say, uh, the behavior change should be observed for evaluation, not by the patron. In many projects, just counting how many cars are parking, how many people are using the trains, but behavior change is very important. So then the another one is a transit-oriented development. So less dependence on the car usage, we should control the car usage by enforcement, sometimes by pricing. And also at the same time, we have to provide alternative mode, mainly the public transportation. To make it attractive, we need the supportive idea. It's a development issue. So it's a TOD, transit to development. And then we move to the cases. First, Tokyo, uh, I guess some of you have been to Japan or Tokyo, or at least you know some about Tokyo through the internet or uh, TV programs. The one with a very interesting case is uh, this share. Uh, commuting people, the share of the rail is very high, 74%. New York is 43 and London 52. It's very high. And however, please understand, in Japan, in most cities, commuting cost is supported by or completely paid by the employers. Even in my case, my commuting cost by the subway is paid by the university. So in case of private car, or no, in case of private car, it's, in most cases, it's not a full, full, full support, the partial support, but it's paid by the uh, company. It's a very big difference. And historically speaking, Tokyo uh, has been expanding firstly the oh, railway comes, and after that, development comes. Then motorization comes. Therefore, the structure of city is based on the railway. So if we just simply design here, it's a rail network in urbanized area. You can understand how it's connected. When you buy the uh, new uh, housing or the apartment or flat or condominium, there are a lot of advertisement. The first one is the distance to the station. Uh, we never say distance to the interchange. We say the distance to the station, uh, five minutes walk to the station. It becomes a very important keyword for the customers. So it's our stance. And we pick up this area. It's a very interesting area. We call Tamade and Tosh. It's a very unique example of TOD because the private railway company initiated development as well as railway construction. Uh, so the idea is like this, uh, developing the good environment. So then people start to live then later we get the more passengers. After that, uh, since the area is very attractive, land price is rising. So then the railway company, the railway part and the development part, both part to get the money, so they can reinvestment once again and more development going on. So it's the strategy of the this railway company. And originally, it's a 1965 or 66, like this, and it's changing uh, gradually. And, but in the 1970s, already they opened the department store and a lot of the people are using this station. So still we are on the way of the motorization, not so many cars there, so, but railways are already there. And now it becomes a very beautiful city. And so Tamade and Toshi, it's on the west side of Tokyo and the population is 600,000 and the private operator Tokyo uh, developed the area and the, it's around the commuter railways. And so we, we achieved high share of the commuter rails and the less number of the commuters of Tokyo by car. So it looks successful. However, uh, I raise a question, it's perfectly successful, maybe not. There's, there's some small problem. Residents are living in the surrounding area and uh, with the higher densities. And also at the railway stations, the shopping functions. And so, what's happening? The, uh, the area is very attractive. There are income level in, uh, growing, and so the car ownership is uh, become very high, especially after the motorization. So they try to start to use the car uh, to the station. The, it's a problem in our bus system. Private bus operator fare is very high. And uh, in some, of course, as I said, the company supports this uh, money, but 
some uh, employees reimburse this uh, commuter plus to the uh, cash, and they uh, use uh, cars or the parking. But anyway, uh, they are using cars. And then, so as a result, when you visit the area, for example, in the morning peak, there are a lot of cars to the later station. It makes a very, very local congestion. And in the weekend, what's happening? Shopping center is very attractive. Once again, they come by the car. So if you go to the department store buy car and you buy the, your commodity, you will get a discount. If you go by the public transport, there's no discount. So to go to the shopping center by car is cheaper. So the traffic is happening. So, so the commuting activity in the Tokyo area, in the macro level, it's completely successful. But in the local level, it has a problem. And then Bangkok, my favorite city, uh, now it's a boom of the urban rails and following by the TOD. Uh, it's the left to right the existing network of rails and the right and the, and including under construction and they have a uh, very big uh, plan. It's already approved. So it's a very big network of rails. So uh, in, in 10 years, they say, uh, they will complete this network. And so it's a very, very big movement What's happening uh, is uh, uh, most of the railway has a lot of passengers, it's congested. And along with the railways, there's a, a condominium that constructed. Some Japanese real estate companies also involved in this kind of project. And uh, so those are constructed along with the railway stations. But still, traffic jam is going on. So why? Well, how we should understand? So. Uh, based on our research, it's a, just a result. The modal shift is happening, partially uh, occurs, because the rail is very punctual and it's very safe and air conditioned. That's very important. And, uh, but when I have the interview, the mainly the, those la new railway passengers uh, coming from the former use of the air conditioned bus and the taxis, and, and some from the choice car users. In, in this context, it would be successful. However, still the majority, especially middle or the middle to higher income group, we prefer to use the door-to-door -door movement. And uh, the main reason is the poor working environment. For example, in this case, this condominium looks connected with a railway station, but actually not. Uh, you have to walk a very long detour the way. So the designing of the buildings is okay, designing of the stations is okay. But the connectivity or the workability design is very poor. And so, uh, but I have to say that this boom itself is very successful because many people already got the choice of the punctual mobility. When I was living in a bank, there are no railway services. Therefore, we didn't have any choice of the punctual movement. But now they have. In that sense, it's successful. But whether we can say it's a TOD, maybe not. So the condominiums, uh, less consideration for walkability and its circulation, and more consideration for garages and its circulation, and many investment for richer people. So in that sense, we, we are sure that a lot of the condominiums will be constructed uh, these 10, days, 10 years of, uh, in the near future. However, it will not contribute to the reduction of car traffic in this uh, context. So condominium near the station looks like TOD, but a less contribution to car reduction on a better environment. And another funny story is like this. It's a suburban area of Bangkok. It's so-called a gated community, originally designed for richer people. It's connected to the motorway. However, new rail service comes. What's happening is uh, the people in the bank are very, very flexible, and they started to open new gate, a very small gate, just for the pedestrian connecting stations. So uh, it means some of the rich people prefer punctual faster model. It's a very new tendency. So I went there. It's a the, it's a rail, and it's a it's a former conventional rail. It's a the new rail, and it's station, and uh, it's a circulation mm -hmm. pass and it's at the gate it's a gate and they say the Dela government you cannot enter and I said 
I'm a rich Japanese people. I like to buy some housing inside here. Can I see that? Then they say yes, and I enter successfully. And uh, it's a very, uh, very quiet environment and uh, very comfortable area. And it's the gate once again, there's a railway station. Uh, so the bicycle are using. So it's very interesting. Maybe the resident here never thought about this railway service, but it started, they understand it's punctured very fast. And they, so it, the gate is opening. So they started to use the bicycles. So that's a changing. So that one possibility. I think it's very interesting. Then the creative the case, I brought up my uh, friends. And it's a Brasilia, it's a very famous capital uh, designed by the uh, famous architect Oscar Niemeyer. Uh, but it's actually car oriented design. And the creature is completely different, it's a people oriented design. And uh, the idea is uh, Brasilia prefers the so called modern city designing, and, but the creature prefers the so called compact city. They uh, appreciate the higher density. And the idea is uh, picking up the development axis and uh, involving everything here, uh, offices and residents and shops and the public transportation. And it started in 1974, in the former first uh, few years, just the street. And, uh, but they have the very strong regulation of the buildings. So the condominium uh, can be constructed only along the busway. That's a very strong control. And uh, the design is also interesting. The land use idea, street network idea, and the public transport network idea is worked together. And uh, so we call it a kind of sustainable development. And they set the five axes in the city. And uh, in each axis, they had a busway. And, uh, uh, in the both sides, there's a fourth street, Artillery Street, is a fast track. And along with the busway, along with the bus, there's a slow traffic. Therefore, once you get on the bus here, you can easily cross to the shops or offices because the fast and heavy traffic are running on the, uh, the other street, the one block left or the right. And it's the buses. So it's a well known successful case of the BLT based TOD. And they are a very nice street and nice bus terminals. But they have a traffic jam. What's happening? So, uh, as a working as a uh, no, visiting professor here, I uh, worked with uh, my class my, with students and uh, I got the conclusion. Um, it's a very, very attractive condominium. And then, once again, the price becomes high. Then, Richer people started to live with their cars, even though there's a busway, they have the cars. And lower income people pushed outside the city like this. And now the bus is connected directly here. Therefore, uh, when you visit this Kritchiva city, you observe in the morning, there's a lot of persons in the buses, but you will find they are starting from this area and the very less number of passengers here. And the job opportunities here, so the low income people get on the bus here and use a BLT and reach uh, downtown or the industrial area. Therefore, BLT looks successful. And there are nice buildings along the busway. But the residents here uh, rarely use the buses. That's a very strange situation. And the bus is congested. So, uh, living the history, I have to say, uh, Kurichiba didn't do any action to discourage the car usage. And also, many people now feel there's no need, there's no attractiveness to use the buses. I have many friends in Kurichiba, but I'm sure I'm the best one who knows the bus network. Uh, most of my friends never use the buses. Uh, and then the bus, they realized in the first days, never, but recently they know the bus is, but most of the bus passengers are poor people. And they're kind of, the, um, uh, I, I don't, it's a kind of discrimination, it's a prejudice. Uh, they say the poor people are less scared and less secure. So 
the, now the bus is a uh, uh, dangerous mode. It's a their general image. And also the big two streams of politics. One is uh, that they, the politician, the Kurichiba, uh, would like to have the subways because the Kurichiba is the fifth largest city in Brazil and the uh, Sao, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Brasilia, Porto Alegre, they have the subways, but Kurichiba not yet. So they prefer subway. Therefore, the politicians don't, didn't like the buses. That's the first problem. And then, and the curves are the symbol of the industrialization. So the national federal government uh, promotes the people, especially the middle and low income people, to buy the car and use the car. But the many of them, my friends work in the university and they are struggling how to relieve, uh, once again, the, the change the situation. So I hope. If I have another opportunity to have the lecture here in a few years later, maybe I'm sure I will give it a different slide of the curriculum. Okay. The last one, the discussion part. Uh, it's uh, the, once again the um, less dependence on car traffic, and so the target, the ownership, use of the parking, and the strategy is very important. And the transit oriented is very useful. Of course, the controlling is important, and the provision of the public transport is important. And so then trans oriented can support it. So therefore, but by reviewing the case, I have to say several things. The urban planning and the urban plan, public transport could be worked together. But TOD is needed for the future. But control of the cars are, is needed, especially inside the areas. And the priority should be given to pedestrian. And the walkability of the area should be designed. And the variety of the housing is needed, including the affordable housing for the middle, middle to low, lower income group who could stay near the stations. And the public transport itself should be a quality and safe and reliable. So those are also very important. And in the Japanese case, we are sure the role of private sector could be appreciated. Uh, but to achieve final point, we should carefully design the framework of the uh, regulation or the subsidy system or uh, relation with the development or the other operators. So I, in this context, I said the public pri private railway is nice, but the reality is a little different. When you travel inside the Tokyo area, sometimes uh, only one trip, you have to use uh, five different operators. The, each operator has its own type, there are no discount connection. Therefore, you have to pay one, one by one. Now we have the smart card. The procedure is very simple, but you are paying so many, so uh, much money. Uh, all the accounting is uh, separate, uh, independent. In that sense, many of the, my friends outside of Japan said, uh, your public transport network looks nice, but the fare system is very bad. So they are paying so much money in Japan. Uh, as a Japanese people, it's okay, but uh, we, uh, uh, we have to invite more visitors from the outside. In that sense, the, the fair system itself has a problem. So, therefore, the private-oriented uh, transport and service uh, has a good point and also the bad point. But in this context, uh, like the Tokyo Railway, private railway operator uh, initiate uh, the railway extension and the development together, it's a, one of the options. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I have to facilitate by myself. Is there any questions or any comments? Oh, yes, please. I have a question. I'm very interested about the, uh, you said that just in your slide that your Commune, commute uh, cost, <laughs> commute cost are paid by your, by, by, by university. Mm. So you said the employers pay the employees. Yes. Cost. So yes. I, I'm interested uh, what kind of this, this cost are paid? Is, is that uh, the, the employers um, give you money direct, directly or they uh, buy a monthly car, but monthly public uh, uh, card for you. So mm. What kind of the, the uh, payment? Yes, thank you very much for uh, questions. Uh, it depends on the company, uh -huh. and uh, 
uh, in my company, <laughs> uh, every year I have to show the, our commuter bus to our uh, administration staff. Give the, send a copy of the commuter bus. Commuter bus has a name. Therefore, uh, it's they understand it's a Nakamura's commuter bus. So it works. But uh, I heard in in some cases. So it's an inspection. Inspection is once a year. Therefore, they prepare commuter pass for that period. Once they checked, then it could be reimbursed. Once it becomes a cash, <laughs> that's happening in other company. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, even though the company office has a, a privilege because in their financial report or financial account uh, taxation. This part of the payment is reduced for counting the tax. Therefore, companies are very willing to provide the transport costs for the commuters. Yes, please. Uh, in some of the future trends, uh, you didn't mention uh, GDC population, like demographic. Uh -huh. So, I would be interested to know in Japan what the young people say 20 years old. You know how they should receive public transportation versus cars, and also kind of you know older people like uh, retired uh, people, uh, how uh, they uh, see yes, how yes, friendly yes. the system. Yeah, you're right. Then I did not mention this topic. It's a very serious. Uh, also, as a uh, managing section worker in university, that's a problem. Now the younger generation population decreasing, so. The, our government said some of the universities should be closed. <laughs> so it's very competitive. And uh, according to your questions, in the younger generation, yeah, it's changing. When I was a university student, one of the uh, goals is uh, to get the money, to buy the car, to take my girlfriend, and also is a trip. But this is not. Uh, many of the, my students never had a car. Sometimes they never have a driver license. The, the one reason is uh, they're living in uh, urban areas and public transport is very convenient. The other one is the cost. They are very uh, sensitive to the cost. Of course, I was, but I had a priority. To save the lunch, we have to save the money to buy the car. It's our trend. <laughs> These days, it's very interesting. They are spending the money for the smartphone and other communication tools. And the priority of the private car is very low, so it's a change. And so, in that sense, we can believe uh, the uh, the dependence of the car uh, automatically change less. Then, also, you mentioned the aged people; it's a, another problem. Uh, and now, the 60s, the 70s, uh, aged people they already have the driver license, and they have been enjoying car driving when they were young. And uh, but physically they lose the ability. So, uh, but still they themselves believe we can drive. So and they made a lot of accidents. It's happening sometimes in the in the interchange they enter the wrong direction. I myself saw in the motorway the, another car is coming. <laughs> so and uh, now the but if. The relatives of the family force the grandfather to quit driving. What's happening? In many cases, uh, once they quit the uh, driving, they themselves feel uh, we are almost finishing. And then mentally, they disease. Uh, and sometimes uh, suicide, the those things are happening. Therefore, um, the, this procedure is a very Serious, and we are the one with the idea that in the 50s or 60s we are recommending the people to use the public transportation and the uh, to use the public transportation. Uh, we should give a lot of advantage. For example, you can drink more and more, and you can go anywhere. You can you don't have to worry about the parking fee or something like that. So those activities just start, but even now the aged people. As you said, the volume of aged people are increasing, increasing more and more. And if without any strategies or the policies, the driver license holder are also increasing, keeping. And according with the calculation, we are sure they will make a lot of traffic accidents. 
and so they have, we have to stop them. And uh, but the other big difference in the states in here in and in Japan is uh, we Japanese don't have the ID card. So basically, we don't have the ID card. Now I have the passport here, but normally we don't have the ID card. We don't have the ID card with us. So driver license is the only one to to show who I who I am. Therefore, once we quit the we return driving license, then they feel there would be no uh, information to buy the smartphone, to to buy the houses or to change a uh, bank loan, anytime we need a driver license, it's uh, our customs. They have a driver license, it still has uh, another meaning. And especially the elder people feel this point as well. It's a little complicated. But including my laboratory, uh, many researchers are involved in this kind of problems, and we are very serious about that. One or two more. Yes, please. Um, it's really interesting uh, looking at um, you know your conclusion, which I came up with in terms of you know what needs to be addressed in order to make a TV successful. Because that's pretty much what you see in the literature here. But it's clear that it's important to consider our cultural perspective because solving some of those will be very different in different countries. Mm. So I'm wondering, looking at that list, if you think one is going to be easier to tackle in Asia, one is going to be easier to, you know, approach um, in Latin America, you know, which one emerges is the first one, because obviously all you can tackle all of them, at the, ideally in the ideal world you would want to tackle all of these, but if you want to develop one, which one would be the one if you'd be a developer, for example, in Latin America, which one is the one? Or if somebody uh, interested in making a POD mm, a go, which one of those mm, would you want to tackle mm, first? Mm, which, if you are uh, yes. in uh, that coffee. Firstly, I have to make some excuses. Uh, I we don't visit so many cities in the States. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's the port around, or the, sometimes Dallas or the Boston. Therefore, I'm not sure whether I understand the situation in the States or not. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, one point is a uh, one point is a uh, uh, public transportation itself, uh, because even here, uh, sometimes uh, I don't feel so safe. Uh, uh, especially in the daytime, some area of the max uh, train, uh, sometimes, how can I say in English? A little bit too strange guys on the, on the same thing, <laughs> and uh, I'm a little bit <laughs> worrying about. So, the, we should consider the who, uh, how we can choose the travel mode. It's just in a simple framework, uh, the car and the public transportation. And our goal is that we, have to shift from the car to the public transportation. And in this case, psychological issue is very important, even in Japan as well. And in an Asian country, or even a creature, it's the same. So there might be no difference. And to solve this one, uh, of course the promotion is very important, And but uh, we should make as safe as possible, as comfortable as possible. Public transportation, everything, even in the midnight of the daytime, it should be uh, safe. No, no uh, pocket picker and no uh, drunk, drunk people. And in that context, I think the our experience of the urban public transportation management could be transferred to the states. And, and yes, and uh, about the. Here's the Portland. Portland is one of the very good difference for the TOD. <laughs> so far, uh, it's difficult. Uh, so, uh, control, development control. Uh, in Germany's cases, um, to us, it's working very well, but comparing with the world differences, our regulation is also a little bit complicated. Sometimes it never works. 
Therefore, the in case in terms of TOD part of D development uh, strategy, uh, I'm not sure our experience is safe to use or not. But the, but today I introduced the Tokyo's case. It's a private operate, railway operator's issue. This mechanism, I'm not sure the here, but this mechanism itself could be used universally. Uh, yes, because uh, the private company, the uh, principle is to get the money, it's very simple. And to sell the land and get the money and to, uh, to invite the people to use the public transport to get their money and and the uh, land price increasing so they don't get the money so this kind of mechanism could be also used